All right, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Some fog to start your Sunday morning. Will it dissipate? How warm will it get? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is Sunday. It is February 5th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Alyssa Cole, thank you for starting yes, your morning with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Max. I'm loving it. Of course. So yesterday <laughs> yes. you were out the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. Yes, it was a little chilly start at first, but I had a great time. I saw the Longhorns. I saw the different groups. It was an excellent time. Fantastic. We'll be talking about rodeo and the rodeo road trip in just a bit. But you mentioned it was cold yesterday. Sarah Spivey is going to warm up at all today. Hey, good morning, guys. You know, it is going to warm up quite a bit today, but we do have to get through the cold morning and areas of fog, too. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the areas around San Antonio. Now, visibility is perfectly fine in San Antonio. We're looking at 10 mile visibility, but you go out to New Braunfels, visibility down to three miles, visibility down to three miles in Pleasanton, visibility less than a quarter of a mile in Bernie, and temperatures up there in the Hill Country are particularly cold in the mid 30s, even in Del Rio, two and a half mile visibility and temperatures in the mid 30s there as well. Here's a look at where the fog is the thickest. You can see out in Bernie right along uh, I-10 there and then out towards Seguin visibility less than a quarter of a mile too. around San Antonio. Just some patches of fog here and there and throughout the morning today we're going to actually see that fog lift by 10 o'clock. We'll be looking at mostly sunny skies this afternoon 64 at noon 72 for the high temperature southwest winds at five miles per hour. Now in the week ahead, not not only are we going to see our temperatures do some ups and downs, but we also have a chance for some rain. Thankfully, though, no ice in the forecast. I'll detail that rain chance coming up in just a bit. Alyssa, Max. Thank you, Sarah. A disaster declaration now underway for several counties in Texas following the winter weather. Governor Greg Abbott making the announcement just yesterday. The declaration is for seven counties there on your screen. The areas ranging from Austin to Dallas to Northeast Texas and even near the Louisiana border. Uh, this move will allow for assistance from local officials to repair damaged infrastructure debris, uh, removal of that debris and damage assessments. Many people north of Bulverde are still without power this morning. Some residents are trying to come together to pick up tree debris from the freeze that weighed down tree branches, causing many to break and hit power lines. The PEC out outage map shows crews are still working to restore the power north of Bulverde. Many homeowners took matters into their own hands and started working around the clock to clean up the mess the freeze left behind. All right, and a lot of different areas dealing with the aftermath of this storm in Austin. Well, the Austin energy outage map shows still more than 1500 active outages on the aftermath of this winter weather. Now, widespread power outages in the Texas capital. It's stretching into its fifth day today. City leaders remain unable to say when all of the lights will come back on. Obviously, impatience among frazzled, freezing and fed up families in Austin that escalated as milder weather returned. Just on Friday, the newly elected mayor, he stood before cameras. He actually apologized after a week of slow repairs, failed technology, and a lack of communication with the public. And according to the Austin Statesman, the Austin City Council will vote on Thursday on a resolution that would direct the city auditor to examine vegetation management and examine Austin Energy's response to this ice storm. Well, happening now, the lights are slowly coming back on in Kamal County. Right now, PEC outage map shows about 1,300. 1035 homes and businesses still they don't have power right now. It sounds like a lot, but it's an improvement less than the last 48 hours when 4000 homes and businesses were still in the dark. An Asia restaurant had its license suspended last month after health inspectors found multiple violations, including infestation of pests. So the night team's Tim McGerber went behind the kitchen door to re reveal what got them shut down. Chef Joe Asian Cuisine in the 5400 block of Walsham Road barely passed its January inspection with the 73. Ketchup stored at room temperature had to be tossed out. An employee was observed rinsing their hands, but they did not fully wash them. Raw meat was stored above ready to eat produce and other foods were being improperly stored in bins and grocery bags. But it was the infestation of pests that got the business shut down. The inspector suspending their license until they did a 
deep cleaning to remove dead roaches. They also needed to provide proof they are using professional pest control measures to eliminate the infestation. The business appears to have reopened following a reinspection. <laughs> Taqueria Vallarta in the 800 block of South General McMillan Road earned a 79 on their recent inspection. The inspector found beans that were cooked the day before still temping at 70 degrees inside a walk-in cooler. Food in coolers on the serving line was too warm and one unit wasn't working properly. Workers were seen handling food with bare hands. Meat being thawed at room temperature was moved to a sink. The doors of the coolers needed to be cleaned. The floors needed to be fixed and the sides and back of the equipment needed to be cleaned along with some pipes hanging from the ceiling. <gasps> Peng's Chinatown restaurant in the 3200 block of Wurzbach earned an 85 on their January inspection. The dishwasher wasn't properly dispensing chlorine solution. The manager was seen touching pieces of chicken with their bare hands. The hand washing facility in the kitchen was blocked by a rack of food and there was no hot water available at the hand sink in the kitchen. Trays of fried chicken were cooling at room temperature while frozen pieces of chicken were being stored in a cardboard box with no food grade lining. A bag of cabbage and raw eggs were also found on the floor of the kitchen. The business corrected five violations during the inspection. That's what's happening behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Well, the San Antonio Zoo is a staple of family-friendly fun around the Alamo City, and there are big changes on the way. And so joining us in today's leading essay segment is Tim Morrill, CEO of the San Antonio Zoo. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. So, Tim, right off the bat, what are some of the big structural changes people are going to be seeing coming to the zoo? There's a lot of changes going on at the zoo right now. We're really growing and improving. The biggest one that people are going to notice is an all new entrance coming and that construction has already begun. Um, so the zoo is operating with two new entrances. And then in the next 12 months, people will see our old entrance that was built in the 1950s come down and a beautiful grand new entrance that really better represents San Antonio and represents our zoo uh, will be coming out of the ground and open up uh, later this year. Wow, well, that's really exciting. I know a lot of people are probably looking forward to that. And maybe you can also talk about some new exhibits that are on the way. Yeah, we have. We just are opening our John and Grelly Less Butterfly Rainforest. So, we, you know, we had a, a butterfly house that was temporarily built 20 years ago, and now we've built a new beautiful glass butterfly house that can op be open year round. Our Kronkowski Tiny Tot Nature Spot will open fully this year, so we're really excited about that. And then some new species will be coming, like meerkats this year, and things that we've not had before. So lots of changes <laughs> are happening at the zoo, lots of positive things and lots of excitement being generated here. Uh, we're really excited about 2023. There is so much excitement and not just 2023, but we know there are some big plan projects. You know, what does the full timetable look like? You know, when will the general public see the, the completed changes? Sure. Well, they should see a new front gate this year. So we're really excited about opening that around Christmas time, around the beginning of our Zoo Lights program. The other big thing we have coming online is gorillas. We haven't had a gorilla at San Antonio Zoo since 1991. Uh, we're building a very large habitat, actually designed as the largest habitat in the country. So uh, we're hoping to have up to 10 or 12 gorillas. Uh, I'm really excited about that. That should open early 2025. And then the Kronkowski Tiny Tot Nature Spot and our new butterfly house are opening now. So people can come during spring break or this month and start to experience those things. But lots of big changes coming to the zoo. Okay, and on the prevention front, we keep seeing issues at other zoos like the monkey situation at Dallas and the owl in New York City. What precautions are in place to make sure the San Antonio Zoo is safe for guests and, of course, the animals? Sure. So as an accredited zoo and as a, a zoo operator, we're, the safety of the people that come here, the people that work here and the animals is always a top priority. And so, you know, we have security on grounds 24 hours a day. We're monitoring through cameras and people 24 hours a day. Our animal care staff is doing checks of habitats. And so we are really focused on safety. We work very closely with the San Antonio Park Police, the San Antonio Police, and the Bear County Sheriff, especially when things like this start happening around the country. We're in very close contact. So uh, we're working really hard to keep the zoo safe, keep the animals safe, and, um, and to keep operating in a manner where people can feel comfortable coming here and not have to worry about something happening or something happening to our animals. So Valentine's Day just around the corner. Last time I was at the zoo, we talked about the Crimea Cockroach fundraiser. So what do some of those numbers look like? 
So that that is an annual fundraiser. We started a couple of years ago where you could name a cockroach or a rat or a piece of lettuce after an X. And last year, for example, all 50 people from all 50 states participated and from over 30 countries. And it's the same trend we're seeing this year. We're actually surpassing last year's numbers. Like more people are, are having X's or more people are just aware of our Cry Me a Cockroach campaign. But it's a great <laughs> fundraiser for the zoo. And uh, we're really excited about what those numbers are going to do to help us fund our mission this year with um, people naming exes after uh, roaches and, and rats after their exes. Oh, that sounds really fun. <laughs> I enjoy it. That's the first time I heard of that. And, and I'm also here. There's a hippo Valentine's Day dinner. If you could talk about that, I'm really interested as well. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot going on at the zoo at, uh, at Valentine's time. And so one of the things we have is a, a, a really fine dining dinner experience in our hippo viewing room. And so it's a four course meal with a bottle of wine uh, done by our incredible chef team with some live entertainment, acoustic music. And so a perfect place for a date night. Very unique. I'm pretty sure no one else in San Antonio has hippos um, at their Valentine's dinner. So a great experience for couples to come and uh, take part in that. And then we have Meet Your Next Ex, which is a singles night uh, for people to come to the zoo and just have a good time and meet other singles and speed date and things like that. So there's literally something for everybody at San Antonio Zoo in regards to Valentine's Day. All right, tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We have all the information on all the events we just talked about right now on KSAT.com. And if anyone missed any of this interview, we're also going to post it on the Leading SA section throughout the morning. Tomorrow, San Antonio Zoo, thank you so much. For now, time is 811, 42 degrees out. Go Spurs, go. For stretch for the big, big upcoming rodeo road trip that is underway. We have a full slate ahead. We'll explain in just a bit. And let's take a quick live look out of the Alamo City. The sun is out. Fog still hanging around. 42 degrees now. What is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. 815, 42 degrees. Sarah yeah. Spivey joining us at the desk. So Sarah, a little bit of a warmer start than we saw yesterday, but fog's still an issue this morning. Yeah, and it's warmer by a couple of degrees, so it's still cold out there right now. And fog, even though fog is not around the city of San Antonio, it is in some of our suburbs. So let's go ahead and take a look outside right now with live cam. Can you see on the horizon a bit of haze? That is that fog there that's off in the distance. As we look at the airport, temperatures are in the low 40s. It's sunny and dew points are right there by the temperatures. So whenever you get a dew point right near the temperature and you have calm wind conditions that allows for some fog to develop. So it is cold this morning. It's freezing in Kerrville, 46 in Rock Springs, 40 in Del Rio, 42 in Pleasanton, 39 in Honto, 41 in New Braunfels. Here's a look at the areas of fog. Visibility in New Braunfels is down to a quarter of a mile, down to less than a quarter of a mile in Gonzales. Perfect visibility registers as 10 miles, so you can see it's easy to see in Kerrville, Rock Springs, Uvalde, and Hondo. But even in Del Rio, visibility down to about five miles. Let's zoom in to the metro area because as you head up in elevation across I-10, visibility starts to go down less than a mile in Bernie. As you look at New Braunfels, less than a quarter of a mile there in Seguin and in San Marcos. And then down near Pleasanton, we're seeing three mile visibility. So slowly we're starting to see the fog lift. But if you're heading out early this morning, perhaps going to church, mass, or even just heading out early for your Sunday, know that you're going to have to run into some areas of fog around the valleys and hills around San Antonio. So keep that in mind, drive with us some extra caution. But as you look at your future cast, again, this fog is really quickly going to dissipate. This is a look at around um, noon. And as you can see, sunny skies around noon. All afternoon long, we're going to be dealing with the sunny skies and temperatures will be warming up steadily. Our average high temperature this time of year is 66, but we're going to be at 71 in Kerrville, 71 in New Braunfels, 73 in Divide, 71 in Bernie, 73 Port SA, 71 in Con and here in San Antonio, here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Some patchy fog over the next hour or so. 50, uh, 50s for most of the rest of the morning, and then we'll be in the low 60s around noon. Uh, this afternoon, clocking in right around 72. Well, southwest winds at about 5 miles per hour. And then this evening, it's going to become chilly pretty quickly. So. Sun's going to set at 615 by about 8 o'clock. That's when we're going to start to see temperatures dip down into the 50s, and you'll need that light jacket if you're heading out later on tonight. All right, dew points are comfortable in the 40s and even in the 30s in some places. That's pretty dry. But in the coming days, we're going to see the humidity rise. In fact, by Tuesday, it's going to be downright humid. 
bad hair day. You're going to feel the humidity, but a front will move through Tuesday into Wednesday. That's going to lower the humidity and another front, a double dose of fronts. That one arriving on Thursday will drop the humidity even more into chapstick territory by the weekend. Those fronts are also going to help our temperatures come down a little bit and they're going to be bringing us a chance for rain. More on that a bit. Let's talk first about the weather setup across the central plains, including Texas. It is quiet out to the east. You may have heard across New England that they were dealing with wind chill values well below zero. Even the coldest wind chill recorded in North uh, in new parts of New Hampshire and Mount Washington uh, felt like negative 109 there. So that cold air mass is going to be moving off to the east, but you can see it's still pretty cold up there well below zero in parts of Canada. Meanwhile, this is the system that's going to be bringing us the opportunity for some rain in that first cold front. So you can see that there's plenty of rainfall across parts of California and the Pacific Northwest. Our rain chances are going to increase Tuesday. We'll have scattered light rain, especially on Tuesday night. We'll have scattered rain and even perhaps a rumble of thunder or two. Then by Wednesday morning, most of that will be moving out of here. But if you're hoping for rain, this is the window you should be looking at Tuesday through Wednesday morning and especially on Tuesday night. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to talk a little bit about rainfall potential from from that first front that moves through Tuesday night. But until then, it's going to be warm tomorrow with some morning fog, 75 degrees. Then on Tuesday, that's when we'll start off with some morning fog and drizzle. It's going to be cloudy all day on Tuesday with scattered light rain. Tuesday night brings our best coverage of showers and even a storm or two. Wednesday, that rain will be moving out of here and it's going to be cooler. Highs will only be in the 60s on Wednesday and Thursday as we kick off the rodeo. A second more potent dry cold front moves through Thursday and that's going to bring our mornings back down into the 30s afternoons near 60 degrees. No ice in the forecast, but of course I'll be back in the next half hour to talk about potential rainfall amounts Tuesday, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Perfect. Yes perfect forecast for the start of rodeo first yes, rodeo yes first rodeo looking forward to it. and Sarah you mentioned something about humid hair should we expect that this <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Tuesday most definitely Tuesday will be very humid and kind of damp throughout the day perfect perfect yeah. thank you writing it down thank you Sarah time now 820 43 degrees out Dr. Pepper adding a new flavor to their lineup. When to expect the strawberries and cream soda on shelves. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at those ladder numbers. Pick three, five, zero, one, fireball two. Daily four, five, zero, nine, three, fireball two. And we also have the powerball with two, eight, 15, 19, 58, and 10, and the big number is two. Check out this. Dr. Pepper has added a new flavor soda to its permanent lineup. Permanent. So this is not just like a seasonal drink. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, meet Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream. The new flavor will be on shelves nationwide starting this right. month. It will come in a 20 ounce bottle and 12 count packs of 12 ounce cans. All right, so it's gonna be offered in the Zero Sugar Dr. Pepper. Now this is the only strawberry and cream flavored dark soda currently available. And we were talking earlier, you're in. Right, I'm in, I'm in. It sounds like it's gonna be great. I wonder if they're gonna drop it on Valentine's Day. That makes yes. sense. Yes. Okay, you know, I think we, <laughs> we need to talk to the producers, have a taste test on air. I, that sounds like a great idea. Try it out. <laughs> All right, time now, 825, 45 degrees out. All right, go Spurs, go. It has not been an easy stretch for the silver and black, and well, it's not gonna get any easier. Nine games on the road. Our Alyssa Cole covered the unofficial start of rodeo yesterday, so that means rodeo road trip. What comes next for the Spurs? We're gonna explain in just a bit. The big game is almost here, Super Bowl Sunday, and we might all know that big fan who likes to place bets. Oh. Well, coming up in the next half hour, what officials are warning and some Super Bowl safety advice. Good morning and happy weekend. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Melissa Cole. It's Sunday. And we are happy the beginning of this week is here. <laughs> we are so happy. More so the last week is over. No more standing in the, the freezing cold talking about the chaotic exactly. weather. One of the people out there 
Sarah Spivey. Sarah, you were out and about. I have thoroughly thawed from that <laughs> time there. Yeah, uh, you know, it was so cold out there. Of course, lots of ice. People still, still cleaning up from uh, the ice that happened last week. Today's going to be a good day to do any kind of outdoor activities because even though it's foggy right now in places, we're going to have sunny skies, low humidity, a gorgeous day. But visibility in New Braunfels is down to a quarter of a mile because of fog. Good morning in Seguin. Visibility there less than a quarter of a mile. Same story down near Pleasanton, south of uh, San Antonio, and even in Bernie, visibility down to two miles. Now we are starting to see this improve in many places, and it is going to end up being a wonderful day. It's cold out there right now. It's 36 in Bulverde, 41 in New Braunfels. Good morning in Hondo, it's 39, 47 in Divine, 33 in Bandera, 41 in Yavaldi, and it's 42 degrees at Stinson. Here's a look at the forecast for the day today. Again, after this brief time of fog this morning, we're going to be looking at mostly sunny skies and gorgeous weather. 72 degrees for the high temperature today. Southwest winds at five miles per hour. It will get chilly tonight after the sun sets at 615. So what are we going to talk about in the forecast? Well, first we're going to talk about today, a beautiful day, of course. I'm going to get you through your Sunday. But I also want to talk about in the week ahead how temperatures are going to be warm today and tomorrow, but cool in the middle of the week. That's because of a double dose of cold fronts. And that first cold front is expected to bring us at least some rain Tuesday through Wednesday morning. That's our window for rain. I'll show you those details and potential rainfall amounts coming up in just a bit. Alyssa, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Some tragic news. Five members of the same family now laid to rest nearly two weeks after they were killed in a crash in Comal County. In total, seven people dead in the aftermath of this crash. It happened January 22nd near Buffalo Springs Road. Only one survivor, a 12 year old, Mia Olvera Gonzalez. She was just released from the hospital. She's now in a wheelchair and needs extensive physical therapy. Now her eldest brother, Hector Daniel Jaimez, is going to be her legal guardian. He says he's gonna be her mom and her dad, all while drawing on the memory of the parents they both lost. It's a long journey ahead, but I'm gonna get through it. No matter, no matter how hard it is, no matter how, how many bad days, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta do it for my family. Hector says the Department of Public Safety still investigating the crash and how it all happened. According to the initial report, the driver of the other vehicle hit the Jaimez's family's car. A family is without a home this morning after it was deemed a total loss following a fire. Yesterday morning around 10 a.m., firefighters responded to a call around early in the morning on Kimmer Drive, not far from I-10 and East Houston Street. The homeowners were home at the time of the fire and they made it out safely. The fire is believed to have started in bedroom before spreading to the attic. Fire officials say they were able to get the fire knocked down fast, but the home was still left with extensive damage. Now to new details on the shooting of a school teacher in Virginia, allegedly by a six year old student. ABC affiliate WVEC obtaining emails through a freedom of information requests. Now the records reveal the teacher's earlier requests for help with the student's behavior in her classroom. ABC's Justin Finch in Washington with the latest details. This morning, new emails obtained by our affiliate WVEC through an open records request detailing first grade teacher Abby Werner's struggles to manage the alleged misbehavior of the six-year-old boy accused of shooting her last month. Female victim, she's been shot in the abdomen as well as a through and through into the hand. On November 22nd, Zwerner emails Rich Neck Elementary Administrator saying, I do not feel comfortable with him returning to my classroom today saying the boy stuck his middle finger up to a classmate and pushed another to the ground after bumping into him. Former assistant principal Ebony Parker suggests Werner set up a conference with the boy's father about his behavioral difficulties. Five days later, Zwerner follows up, asking when the unnamed student would move to another teacher's roster. Then principal Brianna Foster Newton says it would have been after meeting with the boy's parents who allegedly canceled. That student remaining on Zwerner's roster until the day she was shot in school January 6th. Her lawyer says administrators failed to take seriously several tips alleging the boy had a gun. Three times school administration was warned by concerned teachers and employees 
that the boy had a gun on him at the school. But the Newport News School District tells ABC News the former superintendent did say at least one administrator was told the boy might have a weapon. The attorney for the school's former principal says it was not her client. Mrs. Newton was unfortunately not one of the administrators who was informed by those in school that day who had this critical information. The Newport News police chief says school officials also did not inform police about that tip before the shooting. We don't know. We don't know. The death toll is rising in Chile as a result of the raging wildfires. 22 people are dead and more than 550 people are injured. That's according to the Chilean Minister of Interior and Public Security. In the last week, the fire destroyed an area equivalent to what is usually burnt in one year. The country is registering historical high temperatures. Well, a new drug that's shown to slow Alzheimer's disease is on sale, but officials say for most patients, it's still several months away. Experts say the slow rollout of the new drug is due to most insurance plans not covering it. The FDA approved Lakembi back in January for patients with mild or early stages of dementia tied to Alzheimer's disease. One year's worth of the treatment is set to cost around $26,500. Now, you all probably want to listen to this. There was no winner in last night's Powerball jackpot, so you might still have a chance to win. It's now at $747 million. Monday night's drawing will be the ninth largest in U.S. lottery history and the latest in a string of huge lottery prices. Someone in Maine won a three, what, one, 0.35 billion Mega Millions prize last than three weeks ago, and a California player won more than two billion dollars in Powerball jackpot last November. Wow, what would I would do that way? <laughs> May the odds be forever in your favor, and good luck to everyone out there. Of course, and good luck to our Spurs. San Antonio Spurs bidding farewell to the AT&T Center. It was a hard-fought loss to the 76ers the other night, but. It also marks eight straight losses, and now they have nine on the road. The silver and black headed out of town. Not all doom and gloom, though. Rookie Malachi Branham, he's finding his rhythm, scoring 48 points over just the last two games. Here's a fun fact for you guys. He is the first rookie to accomplish that since, you guessed it, Tim Duncan back in 1998. So now Malachi Branham and the rest of the rookies, they get their first taste of the rodeo road trip. A gauntlet, nine straight road games. They're not going to see San Antonio until March 2nd. So we asked Malachi how he felt about it. I don't know what to pack. Um, I know I'm probably going to bring like two suitcases and just, just ask the guys because, you know, they've been on a rodeo trip. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to pack, but I'm probably going to start packing tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be exciting, though. It's going to be exciting. It will be exciting. They're hitting the road for the nine game rodeo road trip. It starts Monday night, taking on the Bills, and they're going to be going everywhere. They're going, obviously, Chicago, Toronto. I mean, they got to pack extensively. They are. They're also going to Detroit. They too. are. Go Spurs, go, but let's go Pistons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back here in the Alamo City, San Antonio's Mario Barrios set to make his 2023 debut back here in the Alamo City at the Alamo Dome. Barrios fighting next Saturday, the day before the Super Bowl. He actually has a new training camp in Vegas. His co-trainer, none other than his sister, former pro boxer, Selena. We're, we're putting her in the in the corner, um, mo moving forward, you know, as the, the co-trainer. Like I said, I mean, nobody knows me better, you know, than her. Uh, she's been with me, you know, every step of the way since uh, since we first began. But, you know, like, I'm, I'm super excited for her, you know, and, and what, what she's doing, you know, she's, uh, she's coaching fighters back home in San Antonio. And, um, you know, I'm just, you know, it's, it's just nice having, you know, somebody that, you know, um, having a loved one, you know, somebody that, I've, like, like I said, I've been through, you know, everything with. That is such a good story. You can see more with Mario right now. Just head to the instant replay page of KSAT.com. And, of course, we talked about his fight on Saturday. Well, guess what happens on Sunday? The fan frenzy building ahead of the Super Bowl. Officials, though, they're coming out. They have a lot of warnings. Got to watch out for scammers. Absolutely. This especially to those who are eager to attend the game and place a bet on it. ABC's Serene Shaw has what you need to know so you don't end up in a scamming situation. Just one week before the Super Bowl, a 
Officials say you need a game plan and are offering some major warnings so you won't be a loser after the big game. Well, uh, generally scams and involving the Super Bowl specifically do tend to go up year by year. Tickets for Super Bowl 57 are mobile only, and there are only three ways to buy them from the NFL through StubHub, SeatGeek and Ticketmaster. When you are on these websites, a square NFL icon will show that you are buying a real ticket. If if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, When you look at at a website, is the URL misspelled? Is it coming from a website that you actually recognize? And even if you think you're on a legit website, Pennsylvania's attorney general is encouraging everyone to be eagle-eyed when buying tickets in order to avoid getting sidelined when arriving at the event. Review your cart before checking out because a lot of resale platforms charge extra fees at checkout. Be very careful of relying on search engines when finding possible tickets. Some scammers are upping their advertising strategies to get more clicks. Don't get stiff-armed by anyone asking for payments through money orders, gift cards, cryptocurrency, or wire transfers. If something does end up being a scam, uh, your credit card can help you charge it back much more easily versus a debit card, which just takes you know, directly from your bank account. And with skyrocketing hotel prices ahead of the game, many fans are relying on rentals, but now a huge warning to avoid any potential booking fumbles. Airbnb is warning that if you're going to book an Airbnb home, only pay through their website. All right, so that was Zareen Shah reporting, and you know, we were talking... Who you got, Chiefs or Eagles? I'm going with the Chiefs. I'm going okay, with the Chiefs. What okay. about you? Oh yeah. You know, I think it's gonna be a really, uh, it's gonna be a really great game. Sarah Spivey's just staring at yeah. me from across Max, the room. Max, who are you going for? She's uh, right. who our, are you going our for? Sarah Spivey's a huge Chiefs fan. <laughs> You know, through and through, and even before the the Pat Holmes dominance. So, and let's we'll see. admit it, you're a huge Eagle. Uh, fan. So we'll see. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, very excited, <laughs> nonetheless. Time now, 8:42, 46 degrees. After the break, a look at some of the trending stories right now on KSAT.com. We'll show you some of the things people are buzzing about. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 46 now. What is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? Could we see some rain? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Welcome back. Trending right now on KSAT.com. U.S. agriculture officials, they're proposing new nutritional standards for school meals, and that includes the first limits on added sugars. There's a focus on sweetened foods, things like cereals, yogurt, flavored milk and breakfast pastries. I literally just ate a a Pop-Tart, so I don't know if I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth here. The plan (laughs) also looking to significantly decrease sodium in the meals served to our country's schools by 2029, while making the rules for foods made with whole grains more flexible. The first limits on added sugar would be required in the 25-26 school year. Now we all know it's important to think about heart health and in just about two weeks, I will be moderating a KSAC community town hall about heart health. It's a KSAC community event and we will be joined by local experts and healthcare professionals. So please tune in. I would like to personally invite you all to be a part of this event. You'll be able to take away some jewels, some great, great information. You can join on the 16th at 2 p.m. on KSAC.com. Please be a part of the conversation. You can also submit questions. We would love questions from you all. We invite you to submit those questions. Just log on to our website and be a part of the conversation. And speaking of hearts, Sarah's about to make all of our hearts happy because we got some good (laughs) news this week in weather. Beautiful weather today, Alyssa and Max. Now we are starting off with some fog and I wanted to start the forecast by showing you a look from space because the fog looks really cool as the sun is rising from space here. Take a look at your screen. You can see where San Antonio is as the sun is rising. You can see the fingers of the fog throughout parts of the valleys around the coastal plain. Very cool. Now around San Antonio itself, the city, we're not seeing any fog, but as you go outside of the city center, you can really start to see some pretty dense fog and notice across parts of Medina Lake. We're seeing some fog along the lakes as well. So if you've got some pictures of the fog this morning, please post them to our KSAC 
that connect feature on our weather app, we can show them on air. It'd be great to see that. Here's another look at the fog when we take a, uh, into account uh, the official weather sites. They measure visibility in miles and you can see that visibility is down to five miles in Del Rio, but it's down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels. And, and as we zoom in a, a little bit further down to even less than that in Gonzales, down to less than a quarter of a mile in uh, Pleasanton, down to less than a quarter of a mile in Seguin too. But around San Antonio, we're seeing fine visibility right now. It's cold though this morning. Temperatures are in the low 40s, upper 30s, 35 in Kerrville, 44 Rio Medina, 39 in Hondo, 47 in Divine, 41 in Converse, 40 in Seguin, 41 in New Braunfels. Now today we're going to quickly warm up under sunny skies. That fog is going to dissipate and it's going to be a beautiful day. Uh, by noon we'll be in the low 60s and in the afternoon in the low 70s. So sunny and 70. Hard to believe that it was just four or five days ago that we were dealing with a ton of ice out there. This is truly Texas weather to see us back to the spring like day. Temperatures will cool down after sunset into the 50s by midnight in your neighborhood. This is look at the high temperatures. The average high is 66 will be at 72 in San Antonio, but it's going to be 75 in Del Rio, 77 along 35 toward Catula, 73 in Hondo, 71 in Kerrville and in the Hill Country, 72 in New Braunfels. Now tomorrow even warmer will be in the mid 70s, but Tuesday night into Wednesday, a front is going to arrive. And so the second part of the week is actually going to be pretty cool. Our highs are going to be much cooler than average by Friday and Saturday, struggling to get out of the 50s. Now that front is also going to bring us an opportunity for rain. And here's a look at where the system is right now across the Pacific Northwest. You're seeing a lot of precipitation around this low. That low is going to dig south, place itself just into West Texas by Tuesday. So during the day on Tuesday, we'll have scattered light rain. It's not going to amount to too much during the day, but it's going to stay cloudy with areas of light rain throughout the day. And then by Tuesday night, that's when a front is going to move through and we could see some more organized showers, even a rumble of thunder or two. This is a snapshot at midnight Tuesday night into Wednesday. Now, once again, as is often the case here in San Antonio, we're going to be on the tail end of things. The heavier of the rainfall is going to be up near Texarkana Tuesday through Wednesday morning. But even here, we could see about a tenth of an inch to a half an inch of rain in many spots around San Antonio. Much needed rain at this point with extreme and exceptional drought. And again, that first front is going to allow for temperatures to cool down into the 60s. Second front mornings will be in the 30s and in the upper 50s for the first uh, weekend of the rodeo, guys. Let's go. So you got your first taste of the rodeo yesterday. First taste of the rodeo. Excellent. Looking forward to the rest of the activities. You got up close and personal with the Longhorns. I was a little nervous yes. at one point. Way to yes. go, girl. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. You crushed it. Yes. David Elder out there live, too. He almost made his photographer, Ben, get in the, the pen with the Longhorns. Oh, my goodness. No, I'm an Aggie. But, true. But it, was, it was a lot of fun out there. Even more excited for Thursday. But for now, time is 851, 46 degrees out. Before we head out to break, we want to give a big, big Ooh. happy birthday shout out to a member of our GMSA family, Hardy Meredith. All right. I'm actually teamsing Hardy right as we speak. Hardy produces our 4.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. show during the week. I don't, should we like shout his age out? I don't know. Is that, I feel like well, it's improper. <laughs> there's some big balloons with 40 on it. Well, shh. Can, Context goes, <laughs> happy birthday, Hardy. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Hardy. <laughs> Last night, some of the GMSA crew celebrated him with a surprise birthday. Hardy is a big Star Wars fan, so Aww. the theme was May the 40s be with you. <laughs> Hardy, we wish you all the best. Happy birthday. All right, in your KSAT 12 hour forecast, a little bit of patchy fog out there right now, but it is lifting as we speak around noon. We'll be at 64. Today we'll have southwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Afternoon temperatures look great. Sunny 72 for the high temperature. Get outside, go for a walk, enjoy the outdoors, especially after last week. As we look ahead, warmer tomorrow after some morning fog. Then Tuesday's going to be pretty cloudy with some light rain throughout the day. More substantial rain possible Tuesday night into Wednesday as our first front arrives. Temperatures will be in the 60s for for the second part of the week. Another front Thursday night sends us down to even highs potentially in the upper 50s. So a little bit of everything this week, guys. All right. Sarah, thank you. Thank you for watching. Oh, it's a call. Yes, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Part of it. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye.